And I'd like to introduce our speaker, Holly Clegg, a culinary expert and auditor and author. With over one million cookbooks sold, Holly Craig, a culinary expert on easy, healthy, and practical recipes from her best-selling, trimming, terrific cookbook series, and more targeted, focus, health-focused eating well cookbooks, diabetic cooking with the American Diabetes Association, eating well through cancer with her Spanish and Chinese edition, eating well to fight arthritis, and Kitchen 101. With a focus on diabetes recipes, Holly highlights diabetic recipes with a D in these cookbooks. Holly's diabetic book was chosen as one of the top 10 healthy cookbooks. And in USA Today 2012, she was featured as an expert for a diabetic friendly wedding. Clegg, who attended the Cordon Bleu Cooking School in London, has appeared on Fox and Friends, NBC Weekend Today, QBC, The 700 Club, USA Today, WebMD, Care.com, AOL.com, and HuffPost.com. She's consulted for Walmart, Teflon, the Coca-Cola Company, and hospitals nationwide, and does corporate wellness programs. Holly has all her cookbooks available to buy, discounted for this conference. Pick up an autographed copy today. And please welcome Holly Clay. Okay, I have a loud voice. Y'all can hear me? Because before I, okay. Before we get started, I have a little story to share with you that I bet y'all could relate to. We're gonna have two people that are going to the doctor and we're gonna call them John and Jane, and they're an older couple, and John goes in first, and he says, just for his checkup, and he goes, doctor, how am I doing? He said, John, you're in great shape, and he says, but doctor, what can I do to live a longer, healthier life? He said, all you have to do is exercise and eat good food. So Jane goes next, and she had a little limp, and she was a little hard of hearing, and he said, you know, Jane, you're really in good shape too. And she says, but doctor, what can I do to live a longer, healthier life? He said, all you have to do is exercise and eat good food. Huh? Huh? What'd you say? Remember, she was hard of hearing. He said, exercise and eat good food. So she rushes out and she says to John, I know the secret to living a longer, healthier life. And he goes, well, I do too. You just have to exercise and eat good food. And she said, oh, no, that's not what the doctor said to me. Remember, she was hard of hearing. She said, the doctor said to me, you have to accessorize and buy new shoes. <laughs> okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about healthy eating. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, does everybody here know about my cookbooks? Uh-huh, see, your, will, your wives and daughters probably do. But I'm going to tell you, this is a little bit about me, and I think probably most amazing, if you know my husband, I've been married 38 years. So that's good. I've sold over one million cookbooks, and I've had a lot of fun doing so. These are the cookbooks. And, you know, I was ahead of my time because I believe there was a correlation with what we ate and our health. And I wanted to show people that you could have good food that was good for you. So I could go around this room and ask everybody their favorite recipe, and it will be in one of my cookbooks. So today, as we're going through to share with you whether you have diabetes or you're pre-diabetic or you uh, want to prevent diabetes, eating healthier and a healthier lifestyle really can make a difference. Each one of these books has a completely different personality. Uh, but they're all about good health, uh, and they all have your nutritional information. My business, everybody wants to know if I just stay home all day and cook. And then I get asked when I'm at meetings, do you dress like this when you cook? And I say, of course I do, right? I do cook a lot, and I've tested each and every recipe in all my cookbooks. There's people that go buy recipes, but I take personal pride to make sure every single recipe works. But I'm really in the people business, just like many of you are out there. I'm marketing myself and marketing my package of good food. 
So years ago, I had to come up with a brand, and it was really somewhat by accident. Um, as I said, in 1993, I wanted to show you that you could have good food that was good for you, that I believe there was a correlation with our health and what we ate. But guess what? Nobody else did. I'd have a frantic wife say, I need to buy your book. My husband's had a heart attack. Or I'd have a, you know, someone say, I can't buy your book for my daughter. She'll think I'm telling her she's fat. So nobody understood what trim and terrific meant. And I fought that stigma uh, through the years. But my brand, which I've always been very loyal to, was Louisiana, Southern, healthy lifestyle, quick and easy and mainstream. And years, you know, I've had numerous opportunities. One of them was with Starbucks over a summer. They wanted me to travel around and do media and do all these indulgent drinks. And I said, oh, I'll work with y'all, but I can make the recipes trim and terrific. And they said no, and I said no. So I am very true to my brand and true to Louisiana, and I think being in Louisiana has been great to sort of spread the word that, yes, we could have healthy, good food as well. Now, my hair through the years, that's a different story. That changed. You know, my passion has been cooking and eating and showing people that you can entertain or whatever, eat healthy no matter what's going on. From the time that Ivanka Trump, which really sounds pretty cool now, I guess, was at my house for Lee Michaels' promotion, I served recipes from my cookbooks. To when Walmart approached me about doing affordable recipes, which I think they like Louisiana, I served recipes from my cookbooks. When my husband volunteered me for every political event at our home, I didn't go, oh, I need to go get some good food. I served recipes from my cookbooks. So. My point being with this is, you know, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Even when I was on the Jumbotron in New York City, I took Louisiana yams with me. I was working with them at the time. And so I'm very pro-Louisiana, and I'm excited to be a national spokesperson for Louisiana crawfish uh, these past two years. And a lot of people don't realize that crawfish is healthy. Um, it's a good, high-protein, low in fat, and, you know, and I have some of the best crawfish recipes out there. And... A lot of them are even diabetic friendly as well. I'm also really excited. I'm working with Context Media, so you might see me in your doctor's office. I'm taping recipes and information when you see those things on the screen. So I've had a lot of fun following my dream and my passion to share good food with you that is healthy. I always have to talk about the statistics. We don't like to hear them, but they're there. They're in our face. I mean, it's amazing. 15 million men with diabetes, and how many are undiagnosed? How many are pre-diabetic? It's all there. 75 cents of every healthcare dollar is, fill, is spent on chronic-related diseases, which obesity and being overweight is a risk factor. 53% of all dogs are overweight. So there are some things we could do to try to prevent these statistics, and we are going to live longer, so we want to make sure we live healthier. Type 2 diabetes can be preventable. And, you know, years ago, when I was doing my books with Random House, I was very insistent about including the diabetic exchanges in my cookbooks. And they said, well, do you have diabetes? And I said, no, I don't. But I distinctly remember my grandmother growing up she had diabetes, all her siblings did, and portion, measuring out portions, and I've always loved food and always loved to eat, and I thought, oh no, I, you know, I didn't want that to you know, be what I was dealt with in life. And so I always was conscious, of, I think that really made such an in effect to me to how important diabetes was. Once I was on Fox and Friends, and I had this man email me afterwards. He said, I love your book. And it's when I, um, and I guess that's why when the ADA approached me about partnering with them for my Trim and Terrific Diabetic Cookbook, I was so excited. And he had seen me on Fox and Friends, and he wrote me, he said, I've lost all this weight. My wife lost weight. He said, but I wish the word diabetic wasn't on the cover because then more people would use your book. And that always stuck with me because a lot of people, you know, whether you have a heart condition, diabetes, and you don't think, you know, there's no magical diabetes diet. So in my arthritis book, Kitchen 101, and my cancer book, those three books, I include a D to highlight diabetic recipes throughout the book. It's probably the only mainstream book out there that sort of infiltrates diabetic recipes, but the 
purpose is you can't tell the difference and it shows, you know, it's just a healthy way to eat. Chronic or crisis? <clears throat> Cancer is crisis. There's no doubt about it. You get diagnosed, you have immediate, you have to attend to it. Uh, cardiology, I've had more cardiologists tell me that their patients would stand on their head for the first six months. Diabetes is chronic and you either react meaning, oh my God, I can't ever eat anything again, I can't have carbs, or you don't react. And if you don't react, you will have complications most likely later on. We have choices. There are some risk factors that we can control. I hope everybody's taken opportunity to have the screening done outside. Um, those are very important. And these are the things we can control. We can't control our family history. You know, your genes are your genes and your age. You could dye your hair, which I do, have plastic surgery, which I haven't, but uh, it's our, our plumbing is still our plumbing and whatever it is, it is. So <clears throat> I'm here today to tell you that what you eat can make a difference. I hope that uh, I could share with you and inspire you that cooking can be easy, eating healthy can be fun, and you'll see all these photos, my goal is to make you hungry, throughout my presentation, all recipes from my cookbooks. They're all in my books, but they're probably all on my website. That peanut butter cookie is probably one of my most peanut butter popular cookies, and it's diabetic friendly. That glazed salmon has gone viral on YouTube. There's over 650,000 views. You search glazed salmon, it comes up. That quick chicken lasagna's five ingredients, and of course, risotto. So what you eat uh, can help determine your lifestyle, but we're gonna enjoy eating with me. So there is not a magical diabetes diet. It's about healthy lifestyle changes, moderate sugar and low fat, portion control, and sodium intake. <clears throat> now, so I'm gonna have to give you these tools with my trim and terrific commandments to eat healthier for life and for best diabetes health. Commandment number one is how fast is fast food? Okay, you wait in line, you order, you have to get it. You could have dinner on the table that quickly. Louisiana is number six most obese state in, uh, for adults. Uh, fast food's fine, but if you eat fast food regularly, it could double your risk of insulin resistance, which leads to type 2 diabetes. Think of it as a, as a treat, doing something, uh, not all the time, but when you have that craving. I can't believe that over 31% of all kids eat french fries every day. So we do need to make some changes. Uh, who's been on a diet in this room? I know there's, a, who's been off of a diet? <laughs> who's been back on a diet? Who's been back off? Okay, I know, I could sit here all day. That's why uh, I don't believe in diets. Don't ingest everything today. Deprivation leads to desperation. My commandment number two is there's my diet definition. Commandment, commandment number three is healthy eating is easy. <clears throat> Does it make a difference to eat at home? You can reduce your risk of diabetes by 15% if you cook at home. Okay, I know for you, your, whoever does your cooking, you know, who has time to cook? We want our kitchens to be a drive through window. Well, that's why you have me, to make sure you can do it. I'm about convenience, I'm about taste, I'm about affordability, and you wanna consider nutritious versatility and of course portion size. Probably the number one comment I get nationwide is you always have your ingredients in your house. You don't even have to go to the grocery store. I put the least amount of ingredients in a recipe to give it the most flavor, to keep it easy, because it doesn't matter how good it is for you, if it's not easy to prepare, you're not gonna do it. Commandment number four is thou shalt take, uh, think quickies. Time savers are very important. Buy bagged lettuce, um, you know, lean protein like rotisserie chicken, peeled shrimp. Uh, they have cut up, you know, they have the little things that cut up seasonings. And I used to think, why would anybody waste money on all those cut up seasonings? And then I started buying them when I was taping a lot of TV and I needed a lot to cook and I thought, 
that is such a time saver. So even if it's a little more pricey, if it's gonna enable you to stay home and cook, it's that much better for you. And all my books, I include a little freezer-friendly snowflake because I know a lot of people like to cook ahead and freeze. And the best advice I'm gonna give you today is a well-stocked pantry. A well-stocked pantry, I want you to think of it as a permanent shopping list. So that way, when you come home, you have everything. I could be traveling and my husband will say, do you wanna go pick up dinner? And I could always say I could whip up something because my, ha my pantry's well-stocked. And then my motto is fresh, plus convenience equals homemade. And what that means is if you take something fresh and you add a convenience item to it, it equals homemade. This is a shrimp corn and sweet potato soup with chicken broth, those are our convenience items, frozen corn, uh, frozen uh, canned tomatoes, but we're adding fresh sweet potatoes, fresh seasonings, and then it becomes homemade. So in other words, if you pull frozen corn from the freezer, you saute some fresh onions and garlic, it's homemade. You can quote me on that. <laughs> Commandment number five is thou may, shall make some simple changes. <clears throat> These are some things I wanted to point out that I think you can incorporate into your everyday lives to help you uh, prevent diabetes or manage diabetes. To eat seasonal. You know, I like meat, so if you're a meat eater, you always want to choose your cuts set in, in a loin or a round because those are your leanest cuts of meats like ground sirloin, I make my burgers with ground sirloin, or beef tenderloin, or you know, pork tenderloin. Reduce fat dairy. I would never tell you to eat um, you know, uh, fat-free cheese. It bounces, it doesn't melt, you know, it's not good. By the same token, when I'm talking about dairy, if you love whole milk, don't switch to skim milk. You're gonna go, ooh, this tastes terrible. Go from whole milk to low-fat milk. Make changes that you're gonna be able to do forever. A lot of people think it's that salt shaker every day. No, most of your sodium comes from restaurant meals and processed food. Think about how your food is prepared. Is it pan sauteed or deep fried, or grilled or broiled? And I'm a firm believer in nonstick cookware. Uh, and using healthier oils. And anyway, I don't know about y'all, but nonstick cookware cleans so easily too. And I don't have a little genie cleaning up all my dishes. Cooking uh, swaps. <clears throat> These are easy, easy substitutions. I don't ever buy sour cream anymore. Greek yogurt it has a creamier, thicker texture. It's even more protein for, it, for you. It substitutes for sour cream so easily. Add extra veggies. So if a recipe calls for a cup of carrots, add two cups of carrots. If you have veggies left over from dinner, put them in a Ziploc bag, freeze them, throw them into your next soup, your next pasta. Be creative. You, you never can have too much veggies. I was making that lasagna the other day that you saw the picture of, and I thought to myself, you know, it only calls for one cup of spinach. I'm putting two cups. So I even, uh, you know, did my own recipes. You always want to read labels, low sodium, no salt added, or lower salt. And seasonal or fresh, you always want to eat fresh whenever possible. And again, I reiterate, stay away from processed foods because there's just not anything good in there for you. It's football season. I know I'm in a room full of men, and I know y'all get very excited about football season. And we all do, but it's time to tailgate and there's a lot of parties and a lot of things going on. Um, do your dips with chips. Uh, instead of pita chips, you could use also veggies. I cut up uh, red pepper, green pepper, and yellow peppers and make them in little squares. You could do squash and cucumber rounds and you'll really enjoy your dips that way. And hummus, salsas, or nuts are also great choices. You want nutrient-rich protein when you're out tailgating. You want to look for like a chicken or a shrimp or something that's not just uh, total in sauce, more like a protein. And skip the usual foods like fried foods. How many of y'all have had fried chicken drumettes? A million times, don't you know what it tastes like? Skip it. Now, if you have fried crab fingers, I'm not skipping those because they're just too good. Um, and I know I'm guilty of this too. Don't starve yourself all day. How many times do you say you're going to a party, you're doing this, and you just, you know, you're not eating all day because you're going to save up those calories? And I don't know, but when I do that, I am so ravenous when I get there. I eat everything in sight. I'm not one of these that says, okay, I'm going to a party, I'm going to 
drink a cup of broth so I won't be hungry, because I always like to enjoy what everybody does, but especially when you have diabetes, it's important to eat meals throughout the day, a bunch of small meals to keep your blood sugar regulated. And avoid those carbonated sugary cold drinks. Those are such wasted calories. Um, we know they're not good for you. Commandment number six is thou shalt understand carb confusion. Remember that Rover reaction, I have to give up carbs, I can never eat them again. You want to make sure you have good choice in your carbs, uh, whole grains, fruits, and veggies. And cut out the simple carbs. You know, I think this is so some good little tips. You know, yogurt, everybody thinks yogurt's healthy. Well, if you get it with fruit, you have to read the carbs in there. So put fresh fruit with your yogurt. Check your soups, beans and uh, broth-based soups instead of noodles or cream soups. You know, you want to choose pretz uh, peanuts over pretzels. I was just flying home Wednesday uh, on Southwest, and I think about it all the time. I never get pretzels anymore. I get peanuts. They're better for you. So little changes like that are so important. And then watch your fat-free foods. You know, a lot of times they're just adding sugar to, you know, get your ratio right. So again, you read labels, and it's easy, I think, to make these little changes. And I hope as you're going through my presentation, you pick up little changes that you could include into your life. Can I have pizza? Well, you can if you eat my pizza. There's so much sodium in pizza that you don't realize. Look at this from delivery frozen to, and this pizza is my chicken, red pepper, and spinach and white bean pizza front. It's in the arthritis cookbook. It's diabetic friendly. I have a, I think the chicken fajita pizza is di diabetic friendly. I think even the barbecue chicken pizza is. But what's great about this pizza, it's a thin crust pizza. It has reduced fat cheese and I loaded it up with veggies. It has white beans, spinach, red pepper. Did you know there's more vitamin C in a red pepper than there is in an orange? So we're not giving up anything. Commandment number seven is thou shalt add fiber to get your 30 to 38 grams of fiber, which is what men need. Uh, there's so many easy ways to get fiber into your diet, and eating fiber is great for you know, helping you control your weight as well as helping you to control spikes in your blood sugar. So those things are very important. My husband gets brown rice with his gumbo, and if you all tell him, especially those of you out here that know him, I'll be mad at you. Uh, because brown rice has three and a half grams of fiber, where white rice, white rice has less than one gram of fiber. A baked potato is an easy way to grab fiber into your diet. I have a Valentine party I give every year, a dinner party, and I always make the stuffed uh, seafood stuffed potatoes, which are in Gulf Coast favorites. And the first year after I learned this stat, I said, okay, everybody, I want you to eat the skin off of your potatoes. And they all did. I don't know if I had that much control or they were scared of me or what. But just, you know, little things like that, you're just getting in fiber. Start your day off with berries. And beans, think of them as a crouton. They're a nutritional bargain. Throw them into everything you're eating from salad soups to pastas. And then a handful of nuts is four grams of fiber. Um, as someone asked me in the last uh, presentation, you know, how they love nuts, but nuts are very calorie dense, so you want to also use your portion control. Commandment number eight is thou shalt taste the rainbow. You know, a lot of people turn eating into a science project. You know, if you're watching TV, read a magazine, it's what is the superfood of the day. And people tend to say, you know, my mother-in-law's done that before. Oh, I read blueberries, so can I get enough blueberries at one time? You know, there's good benefits to everything you eat. And I think the easiest way to control eating healthy is to look down. And if your plate is colorful, then you know you're doing a good job. Whenever I'm taping TV or doing anything, I can look down and all my food is colorful. Not by, because I'm even thinking about it, because I try to include color in my recipes. If it's all one color, you know you're not doing the right thing. And dun dun dun! Chocolate is now an antioxidant. Yay! I always figure if we wait long enough, everything gets healthy at some point. That's right, it's an antioxidant, and, it, and antioxidants are good for you, and especially dark chocolate. So if you want to eat chocolate, it's better to do dark chocolate. I try to, to get chocolate recipes good. I'll use, 
you know, cocoa and, um, and not your saturated fat and less of that. That's why in coconut, I love coconut and I love avocados. Avocados are good for you. So I'm figuring out now they're starting with coconut water. I'm sure it's right, right around. But that's why you shouldn't, you remember diets, uh, you don't want to go on a diet. You don't want to deprive yourself of anything. It's just a general way of healthy eating. <clears throat> Commandment number nine is thou shall have no kitchen stress. If you're out in ingredient, how many times has someone gone to the grocery store and ran to get another item uh, because they were out of it? Well, I can promise you, if you're making my lasagna and it didn't have onions in it, not one person's going to go, this is good, but where's the onions? We put that pressure on the, ourselves in the kitchen. Nobody cares. I always say if you have a chocolate souffle and it falls, you serve it as chocolate pudding. And I always tell the story that my sister, you know, I say there's two kinds of cooks, one that follows the recipe verbatim and one that says, I'll add a little this, a little that. Well, my sister's the one that does it exactly, but I know I finally reached her because she was making this cake one time and all the layers fell apart. She said, I remember what you said, you never go back to the grocery store, you make it work. So she said, I piled it together, covered it with light Cool Whip, and I served it as a chocolate bomb. And then I know many of you like menus, so I always include menus in my cookbook as well to sort of give you some guides. Commandment number 10 is thou shalt exercise and not smoke. Exercise is good for you no matter what age, shape, size, whatever, you should adapt yourself to exercise. Dr. James Levine from Mayo Clinic says if you stand, you pace, or you fidget over two hours a day, it's worth 350 calories. All right, everybody, fidget, come on. When you're out there standing in line, you're not going to be negative. You're going to be positive, right? And then, of course, not smoking. My dad had larynx cancer 16 years ago and would try out, go around to the uh, schools in the Fort Worth, Dallas area to show them not to smoke, but what can happen. There's nothing good about that, for sure. Commandment number 11. I wrote the commandments, so I get to do as many as I want. Thou shalt have no forbidden food. I thought, you know, Labor Day's coming up, and again, I'm showing you, these are all diabetic recipes on this slide from potato salad, which that is the best sweet potato salad. This is an Asian burger, spinach and artichoke dip, and these are chocolate brownies. That eating healthy doesn't mean you have to give up. I change the way you prepare the food, but you don't have to change what you're eating. What? What about the brownies? Is it too much of chocolate is bad for you? Too much of anything is bad for you. A little of everything is good for you. You just don't overdo it. Just don't want to overdo it. You got it. It's back to what I said 25 years ago. I'm still preaching the same thing about moderation. Love Louisiana food, and that is um, my Louisiana crawfish etouffee, which is one of the most searched crawfish etouffees. If you search easy crawfish etouffee, that's what comes up, and that's a diabetic recipe. So, um, and of course, you have to use our wonderful Louisiana crawfish or it doesn't work. But even our favorite Louisiana recipes, there's a chicken and sausage gumbo, that's diabetic as well. You know, I, it's, I'm proving that rumor that Louisiana food isn't good for you. We have wonderful resources in seafood, and it's how we prepare it that makes the difference. So Gulf Coast Favorites also has all your favorite Louisiana recipes. And as I told you, um, it's important to me that my cancer book, uh, Kitchen 101, and the arthritis book highlight diabetic recipes throughout the book. However, I always like to point out that even if my recipes don't fit into a diabetic guideline, they're still better for you. Like the white chocolate cheesecake, in, uh, it's in Gulf Coast Favorites. It might have five grams of saturated fat, but if you go eat it out, it probably has 25 grams of saturated fat. So if you eat the way I cook and the tips I've given you today, it's going to be better for you. We are living longer today. I think it's like a third of our population is over 55, so we need to stay healthy also longer. Who's online? Anybody follow me online? You know, if the women were in here, they all would follow me, right? <laughs> 
We all need a start. I have a lot of fun recipes. You can sign up for my weekly emails. I have a YouTube channel. Pretty much I'm all over the place, uh, but hopefully I'm in your kitchen. What a success. Um, I feel very fortunate that my passion has been cooking and I feel like I make a difference in people's lives. Rather, you know, you have a health condition such as diabetes, cancer, arthritis, or you want to prevent a health condition and just make slight changes to eat healthier so you'll, you know, feel better and hopefully prevent something from going wrong. I thought I, you know, really made it when I met Paul Proudhon and when I saw Martha Stewart in New York, I was excited. But to me, success was finding a balance between my professional and my personal life, uh, which means those precious five grandchildren up there pretty much light up my life. And so this is my family, which no matter what I did, I'd always come right back home and cook for them, and they kept me very grounded. These are the cookbooks. Kitchen 101 is probably my easiest cookbook. Uh, Too Hot in the Kitchen is fun and trendy. Gulf Coast is really more your southern Louisiana. Then uh, I have a diabetic book with the ADA. Eating Well Through Cancer is with uh, Dr. Militello, and it's also out in Spanish. And the Arthritis is an anti-inflammatory book. But they're all easy 30-minute recipes. You probably have your ingredients in your hand. And for those of you who know Dr. Curtis Chastain, um, I might have a surprise next year in 2018 with him coming out in a book. So you can keep, uh, keep your eyes open for that. Uh, I do corporate wellness. And, you know, if anybody has any questions, I will entertain those now. I will, oh, also, the cookbooks are discounted out there, or you could put in MEN25 on my website uh, for the cookbooks to get a 25% discount there, too. Yes? Give you what? The purple recipe is that it, it, uh, it has something to do with uh, it reduced um, aging. Purple. Yeah. Purple. 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 Oh, purple foods. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, eggplants, purple. Um, I'm trying to think of what are the grapes, you know, red wine. <laughs> Um, again, you know, most importantly is a lifestyle. So eat with color. Don't worry about if it's purple, but include purple recipes. You know, cabbage, red purple cabbage, all those. And thank you for paying close attention. Pardon? Yes, I do cook with olive oil. That was a question. Do I cook? Yes, sir. Oh, I don't think, I think that's been cleared up. Um, I think sometimes, you know, anytime you get fresh, it's always better. And sometimes when maybe shrimp has been frozen, they do things with it to frozen. But my advice is switch to Louisiana crawfish, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I buy, and I still do this. I started this with my kids. You know, my kids, I never served them fast food. It really wasn't a conscious decision back then. I, I just would say, they said, well, let me just go to the grocery store and I'll pick up ground meat and I'll make you some. So I start, I'll keep little burger patties in my refrigerator, but I buy ground sirloin. Ground sirloin, any meat eaten in a loin or a round are your leanest cuts of meat. So you want ground sirloin or ground round? Ground chuck might taste a little better, but it has a little more fat in it. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Yes, sir. What about roadkill? <laughs> what about it? <laughs> what about venison? You cook the venison? Cool. 
Venison is very lean. Uh, believe it or not, is many cookbooks and recipes as I do, I um, don't usually cook with wild game, but I have wild game in my cookbook from in Gulf Coast Favorites, and I had all my hunter friends give me uh, recipes. Wild game is a very lean, venison's a very lean cut of meat, and it's something good to cook with. You should. Yes. Yes. Yes, sausage is fattening, but they have, you know, reduced fat varieties, and you could buy chicken sausage. You know, here's a good point to going back to the meat. A lot of times people think ground turkey or turkey sausage. It's important to read the labels because a lot of time uh, if turkey's not white meat turkey, which really doesn't taste that great, uh, it has all the fat and skin to make it taste better, and you're better off buying ground sirloin is almost as leaner than that. So same thing with sausage. They have some great varieties now of chicken sausage. I always read my labels and you'll find a different a lower usually they're lower fat sausages with chicken. Beef yes. Sausage. Huh? Beef well I usually try to buy chicken sausage. They have some good varieties now. But you can. But read they have reduced fat sausages they've been making for years. Yes. Well, I think there's a new, uh, by uh, Manda, I think, had, Manda has one of the best low-fat sausages, and it might be andouille. However, I'm a firm believer, if you just love andouille sausage, slice it thinner, and maybe if the recipe calls for a pound, use a half a pound and slice it thinner and put it in there. You know, it's all about taste is most important. You know, I can make every recipe lower in fat, but then you lose your taste. It's a balance between fat and taste, and you want it to become your lifestyle. But most recipes, original ones, probably have, you know, more sausage than you need in it. So I would use the andouille, if that's really what you feel like gives it the flavor you need, and use less of it. So the seasoning makes the flavor? The seasoning makes the flavor, that's right. That's right. And my recipes give it the flavor, right? Anybody else have any questions? Are y'all inspired? Yeah. Next year I'm going to see you and I'm going to have all these healthy men again.